Hello everybody. Doing the uh, 128 diagnostic cartridge. Went kind of quick. Hmm. But anyway, I was here to demonstrate to you. Uh, it's kind of low light up in here. Put the old wiring harness that you hook up. And this Commodore uh, seems to be testing out all right. But I got this one down on the floor that I've been having some issues with. And it's this one right here. Oh yeah. Can't forget about these lovely babies. But uh, anyway, it's got Jiffy Doss in it. Switch is uh, taped there on the front. And this is a Commodore. So let's hook up the wiring harness to it. how you do it. There's a cartridge. You see it real tight in this sucker boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> Just a second here. All right. So we are uh, going to remove this Commodore 128 from the little dial out calling area. Of course, you can tell we've been testing out a couple of them. Some Commodore 64s and a whole bunch of them here. So let's throw her up here. So the first thing we're going to do is hook these babies in. And I'm going to proceed to plug the uh, cartridge in. Then we got our jack that plugs into the cassette slot on the back of the 128. Try to do this with one hand. So I'm being very fragile with it. Then we have our uh, disk drive uh, port Then we have the video port. So plug that in. Where my Jiffy DOS cables are, we have this test harness that's plugged in. Very lovely made. Give mass props to whoever produced this unit. Give me just a moment here. <laughs> this thing feels like it's pretty virgin, like it's never been used. And then you gotta get the old uh, Jiffy Dice cords out of the way there. Oh yeah. Look at the RGB up. I guess just hook it up. I don't know, it's in, runs in 40 columns anyway, so. I ain't gonna worry about it. Got our power. And make sure the switch is off before you plug the power in. Alright, time to fire it up. Let's see some power.
Now you notice a skip on there? The sound test worked pretty alright. But if you get the um, 80 column button pushed down, then we'll skip all that. So we see the uh, 4066 is bad and the uh, U1 is bad because we don't have the dongle plugged in there for the keyboard which is uh, why the keyboard control board is bad. You gotta take the uh, 128 actually apart and plug that in which I haven't done. It's pretty screwed together but let's hit this button and I'll show you what it will look up like without that plugged in. Hey, what's up dude? Alright, powering her up. And that's what it looks like. <laughs> this switch kind of sucks on the side of this Commodore here. So that might have been why it didn't work. Let's give it a few seconds here. To reset, power down, just charge all the uh, components in there. There we go. And it will take it a little while. I think I can hit the, what is it, the V-hold in there? Maybe help out for the lineage. And not really. This will probably take a good, uh, what, three minutes, I believe. We're at 59, you'll notice times from beginning to end are uh, right on key there, right on point. So while we're waiting for it to go through, we can look at our Commodore equipment. See, so yeah, that's some cool stuff up there. Got my little stash. Alright, here's the report. But last time with the skip from the uh, 4080 column button being pushed, it actually said that the 1581 might have had an issue. So you run this, you know, three, four, five, six, seven times, eight, ten. 
you got all the time in the world, let it run. You can see what's intermittent. Maybe it might be a capacitor. You never know. Maybe it might be some other uh, bad connection even on the IC it being uh, seated down in there properly. So Cool stuff, man. Appreciate you letting us use it. I'll go through one more cycle while you hear the cars going down the street. I'm looking at the good uh, Commodore stuff up here. Analog stuff. Oh, yeah. Firing PBX. <laughs> And the fair drink.